Good everyone, and welcome to this video, and today we have a review on the SD KFZ 2 3 Thor 3. Now, the Derp Wagen, as I call it, obviously some people call it the Stummel, which is its true name, but I call it the Derp Wagen, because it's derpy. It's got a derpy gun, it's, well I mean it's quite a big gun for a low BR, I'll be truthfully honest. Friend of it's nothing compared to the Stern Panzer, but I mean it's half the size of the Stern Panzer's gun, but yeah, whatever. I still call it the Dirt Wagon, and that's all it will remain to me. So the Dirt Wagon is obviously based off the Puma chassis, and um, you don't have a turret in this thing, same as the Pack Wagon. The Pack Wagon comes with a 75mm Pack 40 gun, which is a ridiculously powerful gun. I do like the Pack 40. Um, sadly I do not own the pack wagon, so if you're looking for a review on that, so can't. <laughs> Once I get it, I will. But, um, for the meantime, you get something a bit more rarer, shall we say. And, well, the dirt wagon is a develop, well, it was a original development to be a close, shall we say, close support weapon. It was meant to be... Uses an artillery piece in some situations, maybe even a tank buster if you load heat and all that. But the AP is perfectly adequate at its BR. Um, obviously, it's fast, it's got no armor, and it's got no roof, so you've got to take into account from planes. But don't worry, we teach a plane a lesson in this game. <laughs> so, a bit of history about this vehicle. Obviously, the Puma was developed off the SDKFC 231, I think it was. It was either the 231 or the 232. Um, and it was essentially a improved variant of that. It was powered by a 210 horsepower Tatra engine, and pretty decent engine. Fair enough, it, it could be better. I mean, personally, if I could put a Sherman's Ford GAA engine in this thing, I'd love that. 500 horsepower in a little armored car like this, it'd just go like stink. But the Puma can, well, I'm just going to call it a Puma for the sake of this video. The Puma can essentially get where it needs to go relatively quickly on most terrain. Now, you do have to take into account, obviously, snow will slow you down significantly. You have no turret, so if your engine gets taken out and someone flanks you, you're fucked. And you also have no machine gun, yet this looks like a mountain point for an MG34. Or is it just me? Ah, yeah, whatever. It doesn't bother me all that much. It would be nice to take out aircraft with it, but... No, don't worry. My only air kill I score in this tank, or car, you will see. Now, the gun itself is a bit lower velocity than what I'm used to, so I do screw up a few shots every so often, but... Even so, I like the vehicle. Obviously, this camouflage... You still can get, I think? Um, it's... It's a much rarer camouflage now, but this was when um, Operation Summer happened last year. I decided to go for the 2343, the Martlet, which I have, and the FJ4B, which I do have. Um, but I mainly did the event for the Martlet and this. And I got everything, so... The funny thing is, what it was, though, the event ended the day before my birthday. So I was like... Am I going to do this in time? Am I going to have time to do this? But I did, so I'm well happy. But, before we begin, do I recommend spending... I, I don't even know how much this thing costs now. Um, in fact, we can actually have a look. In fact, I can look, because it probably won't show up on the recording, but... Um, oh, it's actually pretty cheap. Um, about £15. Pounds. In UK currency, this thing is worth right now. So would I recommend spending £15 on this thing? Well, if you like your Pumas and you haven't got this in your collection, yes. If you're an inexperienced player, probably not advised. Why do I say that? Well, the vehicle itself is... I mean, the front's actually okay. I've bounced several shots off this front. But it's the turret where the disadvantages start to show. And especially the sides. The sides will get murdered by 50 cal. 
When it comes to 50 cal, you want to put your front armor towards them because this front armor will take it all day long. The lower part won't, and your transmission will take a hit, but if you load heat and it's a M13 or something, you'll hole break it. The turret is 14.5 with various different sections that have additional plates and things like that, but don't rely on it. Let's just say that. Do not rely on your armor in this thing. Use your mobility. If someone starts shooting at you, back up. This thing back goes back just as fast as it goes forwards. It is 56 forward, 56 in reverse. It is ridiculous. And well, you're going to see a good amount of speed in this battle. Obviously, most of the time I'm camping, because that's really what I'd recommend. Sit back, get in a position, aim the gun, and just pick up targets at long range. That's my recommendation. And if someone starts taking pot shots at you, back the hell up. Because you ain't going to live very long. I believe this thing can get hole broken, similar to a Puma, so you've got to be careful of that as well. But other than that, let's jump right in. Obviously, 15 quid is actually not that bad. That is about worth of... Let me think, actually. That'd be worth about 3,000 Golden Eagles, I think. Something like that. So, you could maybe get a couple of decent premiums for that price. But if you're a fan of your armored cars and... I found it a Puma models. I do recommend picking this thing up. I um, my first battle in this thing was seven kills on this map, but I was on the opposite side. So today we're on frozen peas, frozen pass, or I can't remember what Dave calls it. Um, gotta remember now. Yeah, I'll think of it at some point. <laughs> and we are in a 2.0 game. I had surprisingly many of these, which is unusual. Normally I get fully up to 24-7. And I mean, the most dangerous thing I've had to fight this thing was a Matilda, and even then, I just loaded heat and one-shot his ass. Many people think because it's at 1.7, it's going to struggle against a Matilda. It doesn't. And, well, normally I'd go over the shells in the hangar, but I only carry two types of shell in this thing. I only need to, because in my opinion, you only need to. AP, obviously, pretty strong round, 80 grams of TNT, 52 millimeters of pen, pretty sufficient for most of its threats. But it's the heat. 100 millimeters of pen at a flat surface at any range. 60 degrees, it'll still go through 50, so it's a pretty dang strong round. So, yeah. Now in this game, there's an A13 who's rushed unusually close. Let's just say that. Obviously, this is a battle map, and the battle map has changed a bit on this map. Or well, on this battle. Or well, this map, I should say. First kill. That was with AP. For some reason, the AP round did actually go off, which is unusual. Normally, it goes off in a BT-5's turret. Which means no crewmen survive, but... Some of the hit cams have been really weird recently. I forgot to mention you also get 10 degrees of gun depression and about 20 degrees of gun elevation, which is really handy. Second kill. That was a very lucky shot. I wasn't expecting that to be a kill, to be truthfully honest. But yes, the main weaknesses of this vehicle are obviously no turret and aircraft. Aircraft are going to be an absolute arse for this thing. Let's just say that. And that's putting that politely. Pulled back here. Didn't want to get spotted by the T-26 and potentially shot by the A-13 as I'm pulling out for a shot. I decided, well, AMR's there. I screw it up because I'm an idiot and I led far too much for a small... I'm going to call that thing a tank air. Well, I mean, it was a tank yet yeah, before a 75 AP went right through it. Third kill. And well, at this point, I'm wondering, right, something's in the B point. I see that A13. I naturally cock up the shot. And now the A13's worked out where I am. You'll see he's using his machine gun to try and locate me. I use my reverse speed and pullback. 
nearly rolled a bloody thing over, which, thank God I have eight wheels and not four. Or else I'd have probably been screwed there. The enemy team has started pushing our spawn. Which is going to lead, if I remember rightly from this battle, to their victory. Because I think they win this battle. Because I eventually go AFK because I just could not be arsed. If I remember, if it's this battle, I'll recognise it. I remember most of this battle, but even so. But yeah, if you can get this, if you've got a spare 15 quid lying around or whatever it is in your currency, do get this thing. It's a lot of fun. That is for certain. Obviously, I'm not going to buy the um, the pack wagon. I'm not going to do that. But I'd love to get my hands on the pack wagon someday. With no turret comes a few advantages. Obviously, we have a lower BR than a standard Puma. Obviously, we have a smaller gun in terms of penetration than a Puma. There's that pesky A13 again. And because he's going so bloody fast, the shot doesn't fly particularly true. I missed a shot, but he bounces. The armor is actually pretty tough on this thing. Because it's such a low BR vehicle, people think because it's an armored car, they'll go straight through it. But they won't. Half the time, they'll ricochet off the upper front of plate. Which is only 15mm thick, but it certainly bounces a lot of shots. And there's that pesky A13 gun. Fourth kill. Now, I do carry full ammunition this thing. I don't recommend it, but because of the high fire rate, I carry full ammunition. 30 AP, 20 heat. That is a perfectly good balance, shall we say. Although, for the inexperienced player, I would recommend more heat. There's another AMR. Or rather was. Fifth kill. There's my ace. And don't worry. Um, the disadvantages of the vehicle will show. Well, one of the disadvantages, obviously. The no turret is already showing itself. Because I'm having to use this position. Which is a bit more open than it usually is. Sixth kill. Um... I'm having to use this spot here on this crevice here because there is nowhere else I can really park this thing and use the gun depression. Obviously with no turret, I can't exactly do anything else. Now I should have been a bit, a bit more patient with that shot, otherwise I'd have had that kill. Obviously now he's dropping artillery on me. Artillery is a pretty big threat to this vehicle, so I decided at this point, right, Hit the reverse. Let's get moving. You can see here, 20 miles an hour in reverse. Without any, or well, barely any run up. This thing backs up. Quicker than a Frenchman. And that's saying something. I normally take the piss out of the French for their retreating ways, but this thing just backs up like a boss. I honestly cannot fault this vehicle for, I mean, not having a turret is a bit of an arse. That's certainly gotten me killed one or two times. Um, I believe my kill death ratio was 4 to 1. Which was alright. I mean, it could have been much better. I'll tie that right now. It could have been much better. And there's my 7th kill. In fact, we're going to take a brief look at my stats. Because I don't remember this vehicle. Eh, uh, we'll say 5 to 1. Like I say, it could have been better, but... I mean, you can't win them all. And to be honest, I wasn't looking for particularly good stats in this vehicle. I mean, I'm happy with 5 to 1. That BT-5 is very lucky to be alive. If I aim that just a bit high, he'd be dead right now. But... Now this is a bit that really confused me. I couldn't tell if I was leading high or if I was leading low. It's just because like the angle and everything, it just looked like I was going high or I was going low and here comes an aircraft to try and strafe me. I lose a Hans. That is the only Hans I lose. Sadly we've lost a Hans, but 
And another one's been wounded, but don't worry. The other three Hansers will fight on without him. He'll respawn eventually. <laughs> That's a funny joke I have. If you lose a Hans in your Puma or whatever. Yeah. So at this point I'm thinking, right, AFK time. But before we do that, blow a gladiator out of the sky. <laughs> There's your only air kill. <laughs> I think this pilot was a little pissed off, so I decided, right, shut up. <laughs> oh my god, that was just too funny, but that, I believe, is my contribution to this battle, if I remember rightly. Because at this point, I just start backing up into the trees. I've decided at this point, well, my team's collapsing. I don't really want to die after having this great game. I'm just going to keep backing up, backing up. And I'm just going to go from there. But, yeah, this is the end of my contribution. Unfortunately, I just don't want to... I just couldn't be arsed. I'd had so many teams like this, I'd had so many games like this, most of the time where I died, so I decided, right, that's it, team's not getting any more help, I'm going to go sit in the trees, and, I don't know, watch a YouTube video, read a book or something, even I don't really read anymore, I really should. Um, I'm thinking of getting some of the books that Dave Schilling recommended to me. That's a certain... But um, obviously the aircraft haven't spotted me as I'm manoeuvring to find a better hiding spot. I spot all these trees and I decide, yeah, this will do. I'm going to go park in here. And that is pretty much that. Nothing else really happens in the battle. My entire team's get crushed. I just let the enemy team capture the point because they deserved it. They deserved the win. And there's no point in me going out to fight and die into three aircraft, because those planes are going to still be up by the end of this battle. So yeah, Dirtwagen. Perfectly great vehicle. I absolutely love it. Sadly, I had far too many deaths due to planes, mostly. Most of my deaths were planes, surprisingly. But other than that, I had a lot of fun. Obviously, bad teams, this was one of them. You're going to get those at NABR. You honestly are. But, even so, if you've got a spare 15 quid, get this thing. I highly recommend get this thing. Next review will be on the Zonderclaff Exoig 140-1. A vehicle that I bought during or when I passed my exams a long time ago. And, well, again, didn't really have the best time with that vehicle either. But, Again, it's not about the best time. It's about the fun factor. And I have a lot of fun with these German vehicles. Because they're just so fun. You have good teams most of the time. Well, I say most. <laughs> um, you have great armament. Most of the time you have pretty good armor as well. So, I don't see the issue. But hey... You'll see what I mean by about a mixed time with that vehicle when it comes around to that, that review, which will be soon. Anyway, if you've got a spare 15 quid, people, as I've said probably three times now, get this thing. I, I'm not even bothered if people didn't even do the event and they buy this thing. I'm sorry, but if you don't buy this thing, you haven't truly driven a derpy Puma. Because this is the one... And only Derp Puma. Catch you all on the next one.